on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. And we welcome you to the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. And right here, it'll be number 11, Florida State and UConn. It's the Never Forget Tribute Classic presented by United Rentals. As you take a look at the 9-11 Memorial, gorgeous tribute to those who lost their lives on September 11th, and then the 9-11 Museum. Chris Patola got a chance to spend some time inside that yesterday. Game one of our doubleheader, and it was Mississippi State doing it from the three-point line. They set a school record with 19 threes, and Lamar Peters was such a huge part of that win as he set a career high with 28 points, career high for the second straight game. Inside the Prudential Center, and John Chambi and Chris Patola courtside here in Newark, New Jersey. And here in this matchup for game two, you got UConn and Florida State. FSU ranked number 11. Some experience in the backcourt. That's the matchup that you like, right? Uh, this is delicious today. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's a delicious affair. Experienced guards. Starts with Terrace Mann on Florida State. The senior leads them in points and rebounds and minutes. He really fills up a stat sheet. What a player he's become in his career at Florida State. And then this guy, the pride of Roxbury, Mass. Jalen Adams, almost 19 a game on the year, can really fill it up, explosive in the open floor. What a matchup that's going to be today. Yeah, they're going to need a big game, I think, from Jalen Adams in order to come up with a W today. UConn, as per usual, if it's in the tri-state area, they're usually going to get a lot of support, and their fans are here for this one. Maybe not standard UConn support, but still, there'll be a lot of blue in the building here for this one. Now, they've already played games at Madison Square Garden, and still to come, they'll play another at MSG as they will take on Villanova. First-year head coach Dan Hurley named UConn's head coach taking over for Kevin Alley was March 22nd. Last two years at URI took him to the NCAA tournament. That is a place that UConn was not able to get to a season ago, but he's got a lot of intensity and he likes his team. He does, and if you want to start over, if you kind of want to start from scratch with a guy, he's the guy to do it. I mean, he did it, as you said, at Wagner, did it at Rhode Island, and he's trying to resurrect a program with tremendous tradition, tremendous history, and he has done that with his passion, with his enthusiasm. And as he told us today, he does. He likes his team. And you will see that passion and enthusiasm on the sidelines. We will show it to you all afternoon long and a pretty big ticket list for Danny Hurley, who grew up close by. Meanwhile, on the other side, here's Leonard, Leonard Hamilton, the all-time winningest coach at Florida State. It's his 17th season as Florida State's head coach. And how about last year? when they got all the way to the Elite Eight. They lost to Michigan there. They're the last team to beat Gonzaga. Only loss this year is to Villanova. He's got a talented team. You know, we talked about Marquise Reed not playing for Clemson. He's shorthanded. His leading returning scorer, Phil Kofer, is not healthy yet. He's coming back from a foot injury. You know, we saw him. He didn't practice today, but he was dressed and going through some exercises he's not dressed for this game there he is on the right in the sweatsuit but Kofer should be back sometime in the next 10 days and he'll help him out not dressed for this game I thought you were talking about Leonard Hamilton <laughs> when you're in your 17th year you yeah. can shed clothing and the tie and you just right. go in a t-shirt under the coat mm -hmm. uh, but look Kofer's huge but they've been able to sustain without him yeah. you know they've got they play about 10 guys they're long they're athletic they do a nice job with their defense, forcing turnovers, getting out in the open floor. Um, again, they've got good size up front that UConn's going to have to really deal with. But I think this game today is one in the open floor. Who can get out, get some easy baskets in transition? Yeah, Leonard Hamilton going with the same lineup that he's used so far as Forrest Savoy is probably their best shooter. Walker, man. And Kumaje. And meanwhile, 
on the UConn side. There's that quickness aspect with Gilbert, Vital, Adams, and then Polly and Carlton will go up front. And so one of the things that UConn is going to try to figure out a way to do, and that is negate the size and beef of Florida State. We'll see if they can. Connecticut gets 42 points a game from their starting guards. So that's where you want this game to be played. Umaji wins the tip and controlling is Trent Forrest. And there's that pressure and immediately there's a steal and a dunk for Christian Vital. And they're going to pick this, this thing up full court. They want it as chaotic as possible. Forrest moves to man. And the senior handling here, probing, gets inside, shot contested and blocked and eventually Carl takes it away. That's to the corner, and the three in and out. They had a fight underneath, and I believe they got the foul on Kumaji. And look at this, the ball pressure's outstanding, denying one pass away, Vital. What a way to start the game. You get a live ball turnover, a dunk on the other end, and then they picked up full court right after the made bucket. Danny Hurley wants this, this game today to be played in the open floor. Give those guards an opportunity to make plays. Danny Hurley, who grew up about 20 minutes from here in Jersey City. Now remember, his big move in terms of kind of bursting on the scene with success was at a high school. It was eight blocks yeah. from here where he, he built the program, St. Benedict's. That again, yeah, about eight blocks from here. So he knows this area very, very well. But... He started at Wagner, then moved on to Rhode Island, boarded Jersey City. He was, a, of course, a, a player at Seton Hall, coached as an assistant at Rutgers, super intense, and obviously his dad and brother with the connection, St. Anthony's in Jersey City. And obviously the school has closed, but produced so many great players. I asked him about the ticket list. He said, my wife is handling it. And every person that texted him about tickets, it was... Here's my wife's contact number. <laughs> we were reminiscing during their shoot around today about his time at St. Benedict's. He coached at St. Benedict's J.R. Smith, yeah. Tristan Thompson, mm -hmm. uh, Lance Thomas, a guy that we had when I was at Duke. Uh, he had some real talent. He also had a few knuckleheads in that collection of dudes. But <laughs> what a program he had. Now, one of the new rules passed this year that hook and hold and look underneath Carlton and yeah. Kumaji he had him hooked now the question is is it enough where they would go with a flagrant one on that but he he at least from that replay looked like he had him hooked so we'll see right here what they're going to end up doing as far as whether it'll be a common foul or and it is They said it was a hook and hold. It'll be a flagrant one. So it will be a flagrant one. Thoughts on that? I, I feel like that, that might have been a, a loose interpretation of that one. Well, it, you know, I think they are taking a strict interpretation yeah. um, in, in that they are going to call it more often than, than not. They're going to call it more than they would let it go. I like I like the rule implementation. I mean, that, that goes on far too often underneath, underneath the basket. It goes on far too often with offensive players moving through the lane, trying to induce that foul call. To me, that one, I agree with you, Boog. Uh, you know. The genesis of that rule, in part, is, uh, who was it? Was it Lucas Haas? Is that who? Is yeah, that, who was, it, yeah, who went to the floor and, and broke his Purdue and broke his broke elbow. His elbow. <laughs> Kevin Love in the NBA was yeah. out for the playoffs that year because Kelly Olynyk pulled him to the ground. UConn, the early good start, up four zip. Kick to the left side corner, and that three will go for Jalen Adams. Exactly the start that Danny Hurley was looking for. This is a super experienced Florida State team. That's a new term I just invented, it's super experienced. Three is a little too strong, and that one pulled down the rebound by Vital Gilbert, pushing up ahead, and then the hesitation. 
And Adams from almost the same spot. Carlton the rebound. And Florida State with the board. Four seniors that regularly play. When Colfer gets back, it'll be five. They are old, and, and one of the reasons they made that run to the Elite Eight was that experience and how long and physical they are. They will guard you. Cabin Gelly knocks that one down from deep. So Fee Cabin Gelly able to bury that one. The nephew of former Georgetown great Dikembe Mutombo. Mutombo could not do that. That's for sure. Inside spinning and hitting is Tyler Polly. Tyler Polly's got a Florida State connection. His dad, Tommy Polly, an All-American linebacker for the Seminoles. Just getting started here in Newark from the Prudential Center. John Chambi, Chris Spatola, the Never Forget Tribute Classic here. Second part of our doubleheader. Feed inside. Kevin Gelly able to corral it. Spins. And not able to hit. Gilbert trying to feed inside. And Carlton maybe didn't explode to the space quite yeah, as quickly it was the right as he idea. needed. You, you got to roll hard right to the front of the rim. And it was a good idea by Al Gilbert. You got to go harder than that if you're Carlton. 9-3 UConn here in the early going. Connecticut plays so hard on the defensive end. I mean, they, they are, that is the impact Danny Hurley has had. They're going to get into the ball. Look at that hard head right there. And they're going to deny one pass away. Danny Hurley is just <laughs> losing his mind. Good feed inside. And Kevin Gelly off the feed from man. And then the foul. And they get the foul on Carl. <laughs> well, he went apoplectic when the ball was saved by the official. Hit Chuck Jones, the official, on the far side. So they're saying no basket there. I'm confused by the rules right now. <laughs> I'm just watching Hurley. <laughs> That's entertaining. Wow. And they just gave a technical. Did they go both ways or is it just a Florida State? <laughs> All right, so double technicals, MJ Walker for Florida State. And it'll be Christian Vital for UConn. This has been quite a flurry. Let's go. So we're back to the monitor. Yeah, we are. For those counting at home, we've uh, we had the hook and hold, went to the monitor. We're now back to the monitor to do some more investigating. Smooth start, and yeah, of course. So now we go to the monitor, and now. Both teams effectively get to use it as an extra timeout. 9-3 UConn in the early going as Jalen Adams has gotten off to a good start. This is a UConn team looking to get back to the NCAA tournament. They're 7-2 losses to Iowa and Arizona. Now, last year for Kevin Ali, he used 21 different lineups. Danny Hurley's managed to use just the one so far this year. Well, you know, look, the impact that, that he's going to have is, is we talked about the energy, the passion, the enthusiasm. This team is playing harder. Yeah. I think they're competing. But let's not forget now, they're, they're still the same players from a team that only won 14 games. Yep. 
So how Danny Hurley can draw that talent out as this year moves forward, we will see. Get the foul on UConn's Terrence Smith. Danny Hurley a little frustrated. Terrence Smith, who played for Danny's dad, Bob Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony's. So Florida straight State trying to cut into a six-point deficit. Walker looking for space. Look to feed inside. And Altari Gilbert with a good hand. Gilbert probing gets inside. Good look. Feeds inside for Carlton who couldn't hit. Carlton dies for the loose ball. Can't get it. But it ends up with UConn. Trying to figure out what the call is here. That face is awesome. I'm sorry, it's as expressive as it gets. He just wears it on his sleeve. So they're having some type of problem with the shot clock. Now, 19 on the clock, UConn basketball. Really nice, smooth start here. Oh, there's a step in. And then Carlton fouls Kevin Gelly, who goes down to the floor. Well, it's been a choppy start, to, yeah. uh, to to say the least. I, you know, that play right there by Camigelli, though, was a heck of a play. I mean, that's your 6'10 center getting out, contesting that passing lane and, and making a play. And this is me trying to analyze the one play we've had in the last five minutes, mm -hmm. John Chami. I know it. I'm just waiting for more Weather Girls references. Man, a little crossover, kick over to Forrest. Kevin mm. Gelly not able to follow. Rebound pulled down by Adams. And here comes Terrence Smith. Nice move. And Gilbert gets fouled as he meanders inside. Our under 16 timeout. Danny Hurley fired up as you've got Huskies up six. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by United Rentals, who is honored to give back to first responders and all those who serve their community and country. And in part by IKEA, where whatever your dream is, we can help you make it. And Mountain Dew, do the do. Back here in Newark, Chris Patola of UConn's going to win today. Likely they'll need a big game from that guy, Jalen Adams. They definitely are. He, he's an electric guard, and he's been more efficient this year than he's ever been. And I think part of that, he's a year older. He's a senior. And a big part of that is he's playing alongside Altariq Gilbert, who is finally healthy, who's taken a lot of that burden of handling the ball away from him, allowed Adams to be the scorer that he really is. So to finally get that guy, number three, back healthy, I think has been a big, big part of this UConn team early on. And I said at the top, those three guards, those three starting guards average a combined 42 points. So it's that's half of what UConn does offensively. Gilbert, who missed a huge chunk of time, played only six games last year, three the year before, both seasons cut short because of shoulder injuries. And this is a guy who's a McDonald's All-American coming off a really nice outing in terms of dishing the basketball. Had 11 assists in the win over Lafayette last time out. He's really unselfish, really a table setter. Doesn't need to take his shot, doesn't need to score the ball. Feed inside, Nichols not able to put it home right there is Trent Forrest. Nichols found him, the Albany transfer, but Forrest couldn't convert. Florida State just one out of seven to start the game. And 
And into the game, Anthony Polite. And part of that sluggish start is UConn's defense. They are closing those shooting windows. Like that shot right there, that's a layup that UConn closes in on and shuts the door. Yeah. Nichols, a little hesitation off one mm. foot, and that'll go. Tough I shot. like that. Love that. He was a prolific scorer at Albany. He was an All-America East player. And he's 22 years old, which helps. Got off to a slow start. Started the year 0 for 10 from 3. But how about this? A little off-balance one-footer. I dig it. Yeah, no doubt. And he, he got himself on campus and got connected with their two alpha dogs, Mann and Colfer. And he is getting better and better in a Knowles uniform. Under 10 of the shot clock. Gilbert, mm. crossover, shot. Wow! Wow! A little hot sauce there. He had the big fella on him, and for guards, your eyes light up. What a change of direction into the pull-up. Man turns the corner, hangs, and hits. Count it. The senior with the bucket. They got the switch, and look at him. He backs it out, and then this is where your eyes light up as a guard. Little Pezzi change of direction. And then on the other end, Terrence Mann, the senior, responds. What a year he's having to this point. Leads them in scoring, in rebounding, in minutes. And you and I had a chance to talk to him on the phone. How engaging is he? What a, what a terrific kid. His mom, the... Head women's basketball coach at URI. And he's got some family in the area. I think he said he had in the neighborhood about 15 tickets here for this game. Inside, Eric Cobb has checked in. He gets rejected by Cabin Gelly. Out of bounds, it'll stay with UConn. Cobb has definitely been a help for Danny Hurley's team. But right here, swatted. No Ooh. wag of the finger, though. <laughs> he can't like steal his that, uncle. right? Can no, you? No, no, no. How active has he been, though? What a, yeah. a redshirt sophomore. Going to be a terrific player. Gilbert uses the Euro step and ends up with Kevin Gelly. And now Walker. Walker, jump shot. Nice and now Nichols by. sets it up. Yeah, nice job by him. Getting organized. He'll try a three. Got it. David Nichols from Chicago. He's got five. The transfer from Albany. Adams is fouled in a jump shot. And he will go to the line. More college basketball coming your way on Sunday. Three Eastern. Number one, Gonzaga. Number seven, Tennessee. It's the Air Force Reserve Jerry Colangelo Classic. It's a Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix. Top seven matchup tomorrow. ESPN and, of course, the ESPN app. Tennessee, one of the five best teams, you think? You got two of the five best teams there. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Michigan, I think, is the best team in America. I think Gonzaga's right there. I think you got Duke, Kansas, and I will put Tennessee in that category. Doesn't Jerry Colangelo have enough stuff named after him? We've got to name a classic after Jerry Colangelo. Well, I mean, more power to him. He would tell you it's the most important of all the classics. Sure. UConn by four. They get a foul underneath. And that'll be on uh, Fiondu Cabangeli. So Fee picks up the foul. First seven minutes of this game, there have been a dozen fouls. Well, when you pick up and you are as, as aggressive defensively as both these teams are, part of the challenge is staying out of foul trouble. Adams behind his back, feeds inside Cobb, and he puts it in. Eric Cobb. How about the catch? 
start with the catch through three defenders in the presence of mind to gather himself and finish. Eric Cobb averaging a little over six points, about five rebounds a game. Kevin Gelly off the glass, count it, and he'll go to the line. V. Cabin Gelly is a monster. Look at this move. 6'10, 250 pounds. Puts it on the floor to his right hand. The body control to absorb the contact, play through it, and finish it with a nice little deft touch off the glass. I would say more coordinated than your standard 6'10 guy, right? I mean, he, he grew late. He's and more, he's more pretty impressive. He's more coordinated than most 6'10. Six one guys. Yeah. He, walked, he saw me walk into the building today. <laughs> Kevin Gelly off the mark. Cobb the rebound. Eric Cobb, he made eight field goals all of last year. Was a non-factor, and he has been a big contribu contributor so far this year. A turnover in that spot, and Florida State will have the basketball back the other way down three. Those are the kind of turnovers that have killed UConn in the early going of this year. I mean, just an unforced, unnecessary turnover that puts so much pressure on their defense. Jumper there, and Raekwon Gray steps inside the three-point line, knocks down the jumper. John Chambi, Chris Spatola from the Never Forget Tribute Classic. Here in Newark, New Jersey, third annual Never Forget Tribute Classic. Second part of our doubleheader, Mississippi State, a win over Clemson in the first one. Looks like there's some wet spots on the floor right in that same area. There's a turnover, and now Walker inside, and that rattles home. MJ Walker and the Seminoles have the lead. It's a 7-0 Florida State run. Smith inside and draws the foul. Now timeout on the floor and when we come back the impact that sports had on healing our country in the wake of 9-11. Chris Patola will help us tell that story. We're here at the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York City for the Never Forget Tribute Classic. We're in an exhibition space that's documenting the effect sports had in the aftermath of 9-11. The first professional sporting event in New York City after 9-11 was a Mets-Braves game. We all remember Mike Piazza's eighth inning home run that took the lead for the Mets in that game. I remember the home run, but I remember the reaction from the crowd, the euphoria, the smiles. What an effect that moment had on this city. And who can forget the Rangers' first game at Madison Square Garden when Mark Messier was handed a New York City firefighter's helmet and he put it to his heart during the national anthem. What a magical moment that was for Mark Messier. And on a personal note, I was a senior at Army, a captain of the basketball team on 9-11. And I remember the Army-Navy football game that year like it was yesterday. I remember the buzz in the crowd, the patriotism. I remember both teams running out of the tunnel with the American flag. There's no rivalry in sport like Army-Navy to me. But on that day, both those teams were unified. They were brothers. They were together out there. That's the incredible impact that sports can have. Well done, my friend. Now, the Never Forget Tribute Classic helps to raise money to support of the Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund, the fund that started within a week of the 9-11 attacks. It provides education assistance to children of those killed or disabled. The September 11th attacks to date, it's provided close to $155 million dollars more than 3,500 recipients. It'll continue through 2030. But there's no doubt. I know when I was working in baseball when September 11th happened, I, and I remember seeing, as a New York City kid, seeing 
Mike Piazza hit that home run. And he hit it, by the way, off a New York City kid, Steve Carse, who grew up and went to high school in Queens and in Middle Village, Christ the King. And I just, I still, every time I watch that home run, I get goosebumps. And I did not grow up a Met fan. Um, it's pretty powerful. And there are just, there are so many different moments that I think ultimately helped heal people individually and collectively. Well, what they've, what they've done with that museum, I mean, that was, we went over there yesterday to, to film that stuff, and, and um, that was as moved as I have been in a long time. And, and to see, you know, you talk about the crowd and those sports moments, I mean, to see the faces in that museum yesterday, all these years later, um, it's they've, they've done an incredible job with that, and the money that's been given to this foundation is yeah. remarkable. Yeah, such a good cause, helping to assist the families of those that were killed in September 11th and as well those who were disabled. And it continues on. Umaji not able to finish after grabbing the offensive rebound, and now it's Terrence Smith. Nichols out on him. A one-point game. UConn with the lead. Blows in on 10 to go first half. It has been choppy both ways. 15 total fouls in this first half. Adams looking for some space. He's got the big on him. Ball deflected all over the place. And then flipping it up and in is Sidney Wilson. He's only been eligible for a few games, but after that ping pong, he collected it and put it in. And an offensive foul. Good work by Kasum Yakwe as he was able to draw the foul. The St. John's transfer. With Kamaje in the game, UConn especially on that last possession, trying to involve him in every single ball screen that they can to either get him to have to hedge, to get him to switch, but most importantly, to pull him away from the basket. So that last layup comes with Kamaji having to recover from the perimeter. And for Leonard Hamilton, the way he's played it this year, it's either been Kamaji or Kevin Gelly. They're not on the floor at the same time, rarely. Nice work, knifing inside for the bucket is Kasum Yakwe. And Nichols able to answer. Well, David Nichols having a nice first half. He's got eight points. He averages a shade under five. Nichols started the year 0 for 10 from three, hit his first three against Purdue. That's a good win for Florida State, by Very the way. Very good win. Yeah. A very good win. They were down in that game and the game against LSU. Both of those very good wins. Move inside. Forrest thought he was fouled. Back the other way. Gilbert feed inside to Wilson. Nice play by Forrest. Here's Savoy. One on four. Nichols will try. Got it. He's feeling it here in the first half. 11 points for David Nichols. And if you're going to go under that screen, he will step behind it and shoot it. Smith inside. The little teardrop. Kumaji the board. Yeah, the Seminoles a one-point advantage. Looking to stretch the lead. To the corner, Raekwon Gray, Kumaji, all 7-4, oh. offensive rebound, and they go possession arrow, and it belongs to UConn. Sometimes a guy is just bigger, but he had to release it. I like to call it, it, it. It's a good call. But how about the snatch of the board right over the top? You know, Chris Kumaje speaks five languages. Boom. I have a hard time with one. Mm. It's challenging for me as well. I'm saying the language, not your handle on the language. 
Bruins doing a game with, I guess, Stanford last weekend. And Oscar De Silva speaks six languages, Stanford player. Here's Smith, grabs the loose ball. Now the kick back, Adams wide open, and he couldn't hit it. Rebound pulled down by Mann, and the senior pushes ahead. Terrence Mann weaving, looking for space. Nichols off the what glass and good off one foot. Nice move. 13 points for David Nichols. And he's taking what the defense has given him off the ball screen. They went over the top on that one. He drove it. A nice hesitation. Kasum Yakwe is giving him good minutes. Got the rebound, but then lost the handle. Closing in on seven minutes to go. Look at Nichols. That was a little too far. Scrapes the front edge of the rim. FSU by three. Are you a heat check guy? Absolutely. Are you okay with a guy who's just doing a little heat check? For sure. Polly knocks it down. What about you, coach? I'm absolutely a heat check guy. Okay. 25 apiece. Florida State and UConn. David Nichols giving him good minutes here in the first half. Kumaji gets double team step back. UConn the other way. Here comes Jalen Adams. This. The lob and the throwdown. And Taryn Smith. Yeah, the Jersey kid gets the dunk. He's got four. Terrence Smith, who had to commute about an hour every day to play high school basketball for Danny Hurley's father, Bob, at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. It's back and forth, baby, like we thought in the open floor. David Nichols better step up. Too late. And out on the other end, a little flare, a little alley-oop. Bottoms. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Hurry in for Sonic's new Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger and Tots for $4.99. Back inside the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey, our third annual Never Forget Tribute Classic, UConn and Florida State. John Chambi, Chris Spatola, thanks for joining us. Second part of our doubleheader, UConn right now leading by a couple it was a little choppy in the early going Dan Hurley first season as head coach I know that guy on the left and a guy on the right yeah Kemba Walker in the house Jeremy Lamb on the right. Charlotte in town to take on the Knicks, and that's tomorrow night. So Kemba, who grew up in New York City, went to, to Rice, which has since closed. But he, by the way, is turning into, I mean, it's as fun as he's been to watch mm -hmm. in the past. You know, you're talking, he's at least at the moment in you know, they're talking about first team all NBA type no, stuff. He's had a he's had a heck of a year. And for his stature to score the big the, the ball the way he has. What what a I mean look, he's one of the great guards to obviously ever play at UConn. One of the great guards the run he had at UConn as a player. That year that run that that team had with he and Jer Jeremy Lamb. Saw Mitch Kupchak earlier doing a little scouting. New I think he's the GM, right, of the Hornets. I just, I, I could not get over how many big shots he hit in that postseason. And there is Kevin Gelly with a bucket and the foul and a chance to give him the lead. Fee Kevin Gelly's got 11. What a first half he's had. I mean, just a, a set play. You get him slicing right to the front of the basket there. And you love the emotion from the redshirt sophomore. I'd like to correct my map. He has eight. 
with a chance to make it nine, averaging 11 on the season. Leonard Hamilton's team leading by a point. Ranked 11th in the country, and they got some some good wins over Purdue, LSU. The only loss for the Knolls to Villanova. Under six to go here, first half. Cobb with the give off. Smith inside, finds Cobb again, and then stepping in is Nichols, and they get him for the foul. Just a steady diet of ball screens. And they are putting, it doesn't matter, Kumaje, Kevin Gelly in those ball screens and forcing Florida State to have to defend them. So Nichols commits the foul. Cobb will go to the line. Just two for seven from the stripe so far this year. And too strong on that one. Rebound pulled down by Gray. Raquan Gray, the red shirt. Freshman, Nichols probing the defense, gives off. Gray inside, just not able to finish. Man had it, lost it, and then Cobb just whacked it up ahead, and then Gilbert with the gorgeous Euro step move and a bucket. What a move by Gilbert. Now Tariq Gilbert with the gorgeous bucket and UConn back out front by a point, 440 to go. Left hand wouldn't go, Trent Forrest just couldn't finish. To the corner and that three in and out and now Nichols pushing up ahead Forrest again and they say the ball was blocked man kicks nice. out Adams rebounds and Gilbert UConn pushing it Short, whack back out, Adams hangs, no contact, no call at least. Now Cabin Gelly, Gray to the corner. This has not been an offensive Mona Lisa. It hasn't, and I think a lot of it does have to do with the defense. I mean, both these teams are so aggressive, and, and you have to make plays, and a lot of it they force you to make individual plays. Yeah. And that's why both teams, when they get to the half court, are pulling it out and wanting to run something to get themselves organized. Yeah, both these teams play hard. Shot clock violation. Danny Hurley absolutely loving it. It's UConn Huskies up by a point. He's at home here in New Jersey. Right now, we send it to the studio. My man, John Brickley. Thanks, boys. <laughs> Tell Sean me that. <laughs> I, I was not talking you for it. By the way, Army Navy. How about that? Army wins it 17 10. Three in a row. Let's go. Let's do this. John Chabi, Chris Patola, former Army basketball player, Chris Patola. And of course, you served in the U.S. Army. There's nothing like beating Navy. There really isn't. I wish I could say it any differently. There is nothing like beating those squids. <laughs> What was the atmosphere like when you played them in hoops? It was a big deal in that? Yeah, you know, we played them twice. Right. So it lost a little bit of the, of the shine. The second game was always a national broadcast on CBS, yeah. and it was what they call the star game. Mm -hmm. So that was the game that counted, and you could put the star on your, jack, your cadet jacket and all that. So the second game always had a little bit more of a, you know, of a presence. Mm -hmm. 
Kevin Gelly spinning, hanging, can't hit. And the rebound pulled down there by Yakwe. And here comes Altari Gilbert. You've gone by a point. Gilbert flips it up and rattles it home. So UConn by three, we close in on two to go. Gray inside, and one for the freshman. Raekwon Gray, nice move. He goes six eight, about 260. He's lost some weight. They'd probably like him to lose a little bit more, but there is a physicality he brings. There is, and a diversity. He's got a very diverse offensive game. And I think as he has played more this year, the game is starting to slow down for him. Leonard Hamilton telling us today he still has to lose a little bit more weight. Um, he moves well for his size now. Losing a little bit more weight, it, it'll, it'll obviously move better. But I mean, he was a winner in high school. Led his high school Dillard to two state championships. Out of bounds, and it belongs to Florida State. And right now, Kevin Gelly and Yakwe has gotten very physical. Mm. Savoy launches, can't hit, oh. and the follow by Kevin Gelly. He's got 11. He's fun. What a stud. He's a monster. And then look at him talking to the ball. Emotion. And right now he is on Jalen Adams. Inside. Adams can't hit. Rebound by Mann. And then they get the foul on Jalen Adams. V. Cabin Kelly, announce your presence with authority. The big fella making a play. And then, I mean, the emotion, this is what you love. A guy who's willing to give it, put it out there, it becomes magnetic. And like I said, on the other end, he, he ends up in a switch on the ball, and he said, Jalen Adams, bring it. I'm going to move my feet. What a first half from Kevin Gelly. Man at the line. He's got a couple of points. Terrence Mann, who averages a little over 11. He should be better when Kofor comes back for him. Tonight, three-time world champ and current WBA lightweight title holder, Vasily Lomachenko, squares off against WBO lightweight champ, Jose Pedraza. It's a unification bout in the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. Coverage of top-rate boxing begins 9 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN app. Unified. Unification. That's what the day has been. Shambian, Spatola, unification. We've finally done it. Yeah. Boxing finally did it. They unified it. Wilson fires. Little strong. Kevin Gelly fighting for it. Rebound pulled down by Yakwe. Left hand, and it goes. How about the St. John's transfer? Skying for the offensive rebound. The putback, he's got four. UConn down a point. And a nice shot over the length of Cabin Gelly, who challenged it. Cabin Gelly jumper, and that'll go. He's got 13. UConn will call timeout. 30 second break, and we'll take it with him. V. Cabin Gelly has been unbelievable in this first half. Shows you the face up shot there, the ability to protect the basket on the defensive end, and then the drive here absorbs the contact and finishes with touch. And the sharing of emotion has been unbelievable. Giving it to his teammates. What an impact he's had on Florida State in this first half.
He's 5 of 10 from the floor. The rest of his team is 9 of 23. Out of bounds. And it's Florida State basketball. 42.9 to go. Kevin Gelly and Nichols have been so good here in the first half. Knowles by three. Gilbert is charged with the foul. Danny Hurley right now having a chat with Chuck Jones. Well, you know, look, Hurley gets that's who he is. That was a foul. And the problem yes. the problem with that is like you're fouling a team that shoots 76 percent from the foul line. That's right. And you're fouling them at half court. That's not a good foul. And I understand you want to pressure the ball and get into it. But you have to be able to do that without in a game where points have been hard to come by. You can't foul a team and let them just walk to the foul line to make free throws. And if you're wondering, 76.6% coming into the day, that is in the top 25 in the country. Well, and I was about to say that Trent Forrest is 89% on the year. Of course, he misses the front end. Look, I wasn't able to jinx your Army team today, so don't even start tried, with that though. stuff. You, I did not try. You did try. You must have Navy in your background. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay. We love them all. 9-2 run for the Knowles. They lead by four. About four-second differential shot clock, game clock. Danny Hurley calling out the play. Shot clock under 10. Here's Gilbert. To the corner, Adams, little ball fake. Shot clock winding down. And what do they got? They got a three-second violation on Kasumi Akwe. Tenth turnover of the half. And, and Danny Hurley telling Jalen Adams, he's got to take that corner three. Uh, you know, I think he saw Cabin Gelly Agreed. chasing out and passed up on the shot, but you got you got to put that up there. Six point six seconds. Forrest trying to find space, and they get the foul call. Two seconds left on the clock, and the foul call. And Forrest will go to the line. We think here. I think it's a foul. Yeah. I mean, there's no question about that. Yeah. Brendan Adams impedes that progress runs right into him essentially and it's a bad foul and and part of picking him up again if, you, if you're not going to keep him in front you're going to give him a run you're going to give him a downhill drive to the basket and Trent Forrest is a good player and that's a tough play to stop Forrest the junior from Chipley Florida Mention it's an experienced team. The seniors, Savoy, Nichols, Mann, and Kumaji. And then they still have Phil Kofer, who probably will be back for their next game. That's, I think, what, nine days away. They have Southeast Missouri. Thirty-nine, thirty-three at the half. An eleven-two run over the final five sixteen for FSU. Time now to send you the E Trade halftime report. John Brickley, Dallas Cup. Welcome back to the Never Forget Tribute Classic presented by United Rentals. We are at the half, and number eleven, Florida State, leading UConn. 39 to 33. Welcome courtside here at the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. John Chambi 
Chris Spatola, of course, played at Army, served in the United States Army. First half of basketball that was physical, was. a lot of fouls. Yeah. It was really choppy in the early going. Yeah, and thank goodness for Florida State's bench. They get two guys off of their bench. David Nichols and Fiondu Cabangeli, who combined for 26. Nichols came out flamethrowing to start this half right off of Florida State's bench. Knocks down two threes there. And then Fee Cabangeli showed you the full arsenal. I mean, this dude is a pro. Showed you the face-up game, knocks down the three there. And how about the cleanup on the offensive glass on this one? Shows you the strength and the violence at the basket. What a half he had. Uh, but it was a struggle. Like you said, Boog, it was a struggle. A lot of fouls, a lot of turnovers, a physical affair. 11-2 run to end the first half. Final 5-16, Jalen Adams. Their leading scorer for the Huskies, averaging 19. He's got three in this one. One other note on Nichols. Don't kid yourself. Albany transfer. 13 is a high now for Florida State. But he is really acclimating himself. He's a guy who's had 40 in a game. He had it when he was with Albany against Hartford. So he can score. There's man. And that three will go. And just that quickly, the lead is nine for the Seminoles. They got to get Jalen Adams going here. They need to get Jalen Adams going. And it was not a good end of half for UConn. Again, two fouls. You give up three points on free throws to Florida State. That ballooned the lead. Gilbert flips it up. Rebound pulled down by Kumaji. And the other way goes Forrest. Man threw it to the corner. Was hoping that Forrest would be there. To your point on Adams, talking to Danny Hurley at the shoot-around today, he said, look, in games like this, or the game against Arizona, Jalen Adams has to get a big number. Yeah. Like, like, we are not that prolific a scoring team where he can be absent. We need him to have a big number. Vital able to find Polly. Pull-up jumper at the free-throw line. And they're going to get the foul on Josh Carlton. What do we got going on here? So it it may be another hook and hold. You know, and, and this is this is ironic because we had one in the first half on Josh Carlton. You and I just spoke to the official about a minute and a half ago about this call. And he said, look, if we see it, we have to call it. And that is going to be a flagrant one. We had a play last year where, where Lucas Haas got hooked and hold, hooked and held. I'll give you the right tense there, Shambi. Yeah, we'll be diagramming sentences later in the second half. Sorry. And he was injured for the tournament. And we saw the play with Kelly Olynyk to Kevin Love and the pros. Yep. He was out of the playoffs, and, and the official told us at halftime, he said, if we see it, they want it out of the game. Yeah. The, the hook and hold, they want out of the game, and so we have to call it. And I would guess, Boog, I don't know how you see it. Well, he, I mean, two different times on that play, he was, he was involved in it. This is kind of the, the second part of it. And so Josh Carlton... So they get him another flagrant. Oh, they got flagrant no, two. No, flagrant one, but flagrant it's, his, one. it's his second oh, hook right. and hold of the game. Yeah. Yeah, on Josh Carlton again. So again, this, I mean, whatever, if you're at home and you're frustrated by this, the bottom line is they've made it clear they don't want this play to happen. So whether, whatever the thought is, the intent of the rule and the call is stop doing that. Florida State by 10, John Chabi. And Chris Patola with you, Leonard Hamilton looking on. Coach Hamilton leading his team to the Elite Eight last year. They lost to Michigan. They're the last team to beat Gonzaga. 
You know, an amazing thing about Leonard Hamilton, he's in his 17th season at Florida State. In his time at Florida State, he has only had two kids not graduate from Florida State. And both of them are back getting their degrees at Florida State. One of them was Al Thornton, who was a lottery pick. Yep. That's an unbelievable number. My first experience with him was down in Miami, where you want to talk about the yeoman's work to build a program out of nothing. And he talked about when he first got there, Miami alums going to him and asking, hey, where do you guys play your games? <laughs> and his final three years, he took the Hurricanes to the NCAA tournament. I think it was the first time since the early 60s. And, I mean, they were playing in front of friends and family at that old Miami arena in downtown Miami. Well, you want to expand that number. I mean, right, look right here. Th three of their best finishes ever, ever under him. And you expand that graduation number to Miami. So that's 25 years as a head coach. He's had five kids, three at Miami and two at Florida State, who did not graduate. Think of all the kids he's coached in 25 years. Yep. That's a remarkable figure. See if we can get some more contact stoppages in this one. Forty-three, thirty-three. Danny Hurley's team got to figure out a way to get some offense going. And obviously, you know, look, Florida State Leonard Hamilton's team's known for the defense that they can put on you. Mm. And there, Kumaji comes up with a block feed up ahead. It's man Ooh. and the dunk. He reversed it and used the rim to protect himself. And then the steal. Toss up ahead. It's man. Man left hand. And the follow in the dunk. MJ Walker. If you dunk it, they will come, Ray. <laughs> if you dunk it, they will come. The boat rocker. How about the rim rocker? from Terrence Mann on his field of dreams. John Shambi, a baseball reference for you. I just got it. I literally just got it, right? <laughs> it's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Unfortunately for me, I, I've lost a a lot of family members uh, to this dreaded disease. My grandmother, my father, my mother, and two of my brothers. And uh, it, it definitely impacts me during this time of year more than anything. My youngest brother, Barry, we spent 17 straight holidays together uh, before he passed. And uh, he's, it was uh, a big loss for me and my family. So I'm always anxious to, to be a part of doing whatever I can uh, to, to make America aware uh, of, of why it's so important that we give and, and fight this, this disease. Pretty poignant right there. Coach Leonard Hamilton, cancer has affected him in myriad ways. And you can donate now at v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Terrence Mann at the line knocks it down. Chris Catola, you were magical. 8-0 Florida State run. Gilbert hanging, can't hit, and draws a late foul. Did they get Kumaji? They did. People you know, will come, Ray. People will come. Sorry. So Gilbert at the line as they try and chop into a 14-point deficit. Oh, the distance. <laughs> is that what this is going to turn into? <laughs> and here comes Fee Cabin Gelly as Komaji will grab a seat. Cabin Gelly with 13 points.
Gilbert gets that one, 13-point game. And here's the pressure with Wilson on the ball. Trent Forrest handling here. Man backing down, ball fake, flips it up and rolls it home. He's come alive in this half. That's what a senior leader does. Self-introspection at the half. Didn't play a good first half. He's been so good in this second. Rebound pulled down there by Trent Forrest. And now they'll set it up. Inside, Kevin Gelly kicks to the corner. They haven't been able to get Savoy open looks. Right there, Walker not able to hit. And they get a foul underneath. And it's on UConn. All right, coming up on Sunday, more basketball coming your way at 3 Eastern. Number one in the land, Gonzaga takes on number seven, Tennessee. It's the Air Force Reserve Jerry Colangelo Classic. It's at Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix. Top seven matchup tomorrow on ESPN. Three Eastern, Tennessee and Gonzaga. How about Gonzaga? The schedule that they will end up playing in the non-conference. Yeah. Duke Maui. They go to Creighton. They've got this game here. You've got them against North Carolina. Yeah, that's next weekend, next Saturday. I'll be there with Dickie V and Allison Williams. But first things first, number one and number seven. I feel like, remember they used to do the battle in Seattle? <laughs> and Gonzaga and Tennessee played a few times. I know I had one of them out there, but they played at the old Key Arena in Seattle. And... Mark Fuse got another super talented team. I'm always interested to see the way it plays out because you know the other thing is you do these tournaments early on and they're gonna say it's another hook and hold. Is it Wilson? Yeah, and, and again, I you know, it's it's kind of an inverted hook, but it's nonetheless, it looks to me from that replay like he is he is holding him with his off arm. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Yeah, he does. It's going to be the third hook and hold called on UConn in this game. And by rule, they've all been the right call. Yes. Back to what I was saying as far as, you know, the, the top teams in the country, I feel like it's impossible to sustain a singular level of play for the entire year. So I'm always interested you know, you mentioned who you think the top five teams are right now. Right. I have a hard time imagining that March 1st, your top five will be the same five. Uh, you're, I think you're absolutely right. And that's re rarely the case. I mean, it, you know, you look at last year, like Florida State, for example, Syracuse, for example, out of the ACC, both those teams struggled at the end of the regular season. Yeah. Syracuse goes to the Sweet 16, and, and Florida State goes to the Elite Eight. Savoy splits the defense, and then was hoping that Forrest would move a little to his left. It's a turnover. Ninth turnover on the Knolls. They still lead it by 15. 16 9 to go here, second half. And it started in much the same way that the first half started with stoppages. And let's go look at the monitor. Oh, my gosh. Well, and part of it is the officials are having conversations with these two head coaches. I think Terrence Mann has blood on his jersey. 
Or did it rip? Okay, it ripped. I was going to make a suspenders joke there. I was waiting for it. Yeah. They're going to go in and get his alternate. But like. Manny Hurley. A little frustrated right now. His team down 15. And Florida State continues to play really hard. Adams gets inside. And one Jalen Adams. Heck of a play as he absorbed the contact from Kevin Gelly. And he'll go to the line and have a chance at a three-point play when we come back. Florida State leading this one by 13. Heck of a move by the senior from Roxbury, Massachusetts. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by United Rentals, who is honored to give back to first responders and all those who serve their community and country. And in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. Back here in Newark, New Jersey, Terrence Mann going from 14 to 41. His jersey ripped. So now wearing number 41. The boat rocker, the rim rocker. He came out of, he changed his jersey and came out of the cornstalks. <laughs> I could do this all day. Book. All day, book. I rewatched the movie just for this moment. Oh, man. Gavin Gelly pushes. And now the kick out. And here is Terrence Mann. In and out, Forrest couldn't get it to go. Vital lost the handle, a little out of control. What do they have? Offensive foul on Vital. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you, you got to give Florida State's defense a ton of credit today. I mean, this is a Connecticut team that's scoring 85 points a game on the season. And this Florida State team has come in. They've been physical. They play a lot of guys. They really get after you. But it has been impossible to score in the half court today for UConn. And they've used their offense to, to wear down Connecticut. Like, they have really made Connecticut guard on the other, other end. Well, Danny Hurley, his first season as UConn head coach, and they're is his dad, 2010 Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Coached about 20 minutes from here at St. Anthony's of Jersey City. I mean, the, the amount of players, the D1 players that he produced and the teams that he produced over the years is incredible. Kick to the corner, man. And underneath, and they get the foul on Kevin Gelly. And the UConn fans a little frustrated by the way this one is gone. I think that'll be, yeah, the foul will be number four on Kevin Gelly. So he'll grab a seat. So at the 15 minute mark, some foul trouble for one of the FSU bigs. Cobb wandering inside and draws the foul from Kumaji. That big position for UConn is really a position where Dan Hurley has kind of thrown a few guys at the wall and, and you see which one sticks. I mean, he starts Josh Carlton. He brings Eric Cobb in off the bench, who's had his moments this year. But it's, it's a position where they're trying to find at least a level of consistency. 
Yeah, I mean, depending on sort of what you're looking for, I mean, I, I think so far Carlton, I, I think it at times been disappointed with with what he's brought. And then, you know, they got some good minutes from Yakwe. I think they got Savoy for going into the lane too soon. Saying he did again. What did I miss there? I thought he already the, the ball was already in the FSU players' hands. Smile, Danny Hurley is saying. Danny, I'm trying. The free throw and the deficit is 11. And here comes the crowd. The UConn fans making some noise. Forrest. And if they got Kumanji, that's his fourth. And that means Kumanji and Kevin Gelly both have four. On a good play there by Gilbert, and then he gets grabbed from behind. Not a smart foul by Kumanji, especially with three fouls on him. All right, so let me correct it. Cabin Gelly's got three. So Cabin Gelly's got three, but Kumanji has four. Wilson inside. Good. Rebound Yakwe. Flips it up. Wouldn't go. Rebound man. Man pushing. Man inside, off the window, offensive foul. I mean, what a play by Yakwe. You mentioned the rebound on the one end. He doesn't get it to go down, but he converts defensively. And look at this. Look at the big fella backpedal. And I like the call. A little bit out of control, Terrence Mann. Initiating that contact to the basket. How about the play, though? The conversion by Yakwe. UConn's got to find a way to put the ball in the basket. Yeah, it's been a real struggle in the second half. Yeah, there's a takeaway. Morris, good night. Wow. As he gets the steal and the dunk. He's got five steals in this game. That one led directly to a bucket, I'll say. Smith inside. Ball is tipped. Man ends up with it. Man, the 6'7 senior from Lowell, Massachusetts. Shot clock winding down. Shot clock at three. Man off balance. That one in and out, but tipped in by Savoy. That's not normally his gang, his game, but the guard wandered in there and was able to get the tip. Adams, the feed out. Terrence Smith. And Savoy secures it. Now man up ahead. Nice catch. And they get the foul. Uh, Jalen Adams as Kevin Gelly got it close to the bucket. A live ball turnover crushes you, and I like this. He slow plays it, and then he goes disco. I mean, he kind of read the defender behind him. He slow plays it, and then, man, the just the 
the ability to elevate like that, I can't relate to that, but it, it, looks, <laughs> it looks so nice. And, you know, that's what has killed UConn this year. And their two losses this season to Iowa and Arizona, they turned the ball over 34 times in both of those games. And it's killed them. And again, it's a, it's a defense that has not yet established its habits. It's, it's growing. You turn the ball over that, that much against good teams, you're killing yourself. Nice move there as Terrence Smith was able to finger roll it on the reverse. 13-point game, closing on 12 to go. Here's the freshman, Raquan Gray. Feed inside, and Kevin Gelly draws the foul from Kasum Yakwe. I'll tell you what. You know, I've, I've watched a lot of tape on Florida State. I have not seen the Fee Cobb Gelly that we've seen today. This dude is a pro. I mean, that is a pro, bona fide pro. There are scouts in this building today. I don't know if they came to see Cabin Gelly or not, but he has so shown you the full arsenal. His He is strong. Explosive. Explosive? Yeah. My word, he's showing you a little finesse, a little touch. His ability to protect the basket. He's, he has stepped out and defended the ball. Florida State, the lead is back to 15. It's the third annual Never Forget Tribute Classic from the Prudential Center. Kevin Gelly gets the block. But they're going to say he's charged with the foul. Now he's picked up his fourth 15-point advantage for FSU. All right, Brick, thanks very much. That's a good win for Nebraska. Very good. Taking out uh, Creighton. A reminder coming up, Sports Center. Pucci and Anderson, it's tonight after the Lomachenko Pedrasa world title fight. They'll have an exclusive interview with the Heisman winner and highlights from the 119th Army Navy game. Plus, Stephen A. and Teddy Atlas with live reactions and analysis from the fight. Sports Center tonight after boxing on ESPN and, of course, the ESPN app, Army over Navy for the third straight year, Spatola. Go on. That's all I got. I know you're delighted. I am delighted. Yeah. And it's and I'm delighted to celebrate Army's third victory, straight victory over Navy with you today. Mm hmm Yeah, just you've had a just a little extra pep in your step all day long. Have you been to an Army Navy game? I have not, and I need to. I need to do it. That's on. That's on the bucket list. I mean, for sure. In terms of. It is, and I say this biasly, uh, of course. Uh, it is as unique an event sure. and as American yeah. an event as you will ever go to. Are they going to go possession arrow? They will. It'll stay with UConn. Danny Hurley. His team just 14 of 40 from the floor. UConn shooting 35% from the floor, 17% from three. Bob Hurley Sr. looking on. Bobby Hurley had a rough loss yeah. last night to a good Nevada team. A step back and a big three. Jalen Adams, they needed that.
This is the value of Terrence Mann. I mean, he does everything. He's handling the ball. There he attacks the glass. How good has he been in the second half? It's quick. He can handle. But then there's the size factor with some of the smaller guys trying to guard him, and he uses that muscle. Off balance, Wilson can't hit. Mann pushing up ahead, and now we will pull it back out. Gives off, Nichols. Man has really been the guy to give him that leadership as Nichols turns it over. You know, and Man's, it, he comes in to that class in, in 2015 with Dwayne Bacon and Malik Beasley. Yep. And both those guys leave early, and, and we're living in a day and age where everybody thinks they can leave early. And, and if you don't, it's a stigma that you're not gifted or you're not talented enough. And, you know, it's a crazy world we're living in in that respect. But I give Terrence Mann a lot of credit because he has he has been here for three years, going to be four years, he's going to graduate. And what a career he's had, although that was not a smart play yeah. right there. UConn basketball. You got the foul on Nichols. Seminoles by a dozen 10 30 to go here second half it's been choppy a lot of contact a lot of whistles UConn heats up and get right back in this thing there's Adams missed everything with the left hand out of bounds I think you've got a piece of MJ Walker, so it stays with Connecticut. I mean, that's one Adams has to finish. Yeah. You know, he's had opportunities at the basket. He just can't finish. Cobb being harassed. And that's that cylinder foul. So they got into the space of Eric Cobb and that's that was a rule they changed last year and I, I like that rule change too yeah. like uh, that offensive player has the right to that space and if the defensive player gets up in there that, that's a foul on the defensive player now one of the things again as you take a look at Danny Hurley on the Florida State side they're 11th in the country. They've lost one game. They got that loss to Villanova. Leonard Hamilton's got good wins against Purdue, LSU. And his leading returning scorer hasn't played yet. So. And they were down double figures in that Purdue game and in that LSU game. Fought back to win both of those games. UConn, by the way, 10 for 18 from the line. They haven't shot well from anywhere in this ball. Man being harassed. Kicks out Nichols. Gets into the paint. Lobs it up and throwing it down is Kumaji. Smart play by the senior David Nichols. So you're calling that a pass? And a travel on Al Tariq Gilbert. Yeah, I think he was just... You're calling that a pass? I am calling that a pass. Okay. I think he's saying... You make the call. Pass? Yeah. Okay. I'll go with you on that. All right. This is the angle. This will say. Yeah. Because of no rotation, I say pass. Okay. I'll go with you on that. <laughs> you need to work in your sincerity. <laughs> Kamaji into the front court. Man with the throw down. Get another rope. Boat rocker for Terrence Mann. 17. And he's got 13 of them since the break. Terrence Mann doing nothing to ease Danny Hurley's pain. <laughs> ease his pain. I'm calling it the Rim Rocker. We're changing the name of the book. Fair enough. Book. All right. Yeah. Look at the bench, 
fired up. And yeah. how about this guy? I love his emotions. I mean, it, it, you'd have to say his uncle, the Kemba Mutombo, was as expressive as it yeah. gets. Terrence Mann, 17 points, 13 since the break. And I, and I don't think that that right there even does justice. The ball's been in his hands so much here in this game, and he's been steady and hung on to it, made good decisions. Yeah, I'm sure he's a little gassed right now, too. Amazing. Terrence Mann, one of those rare three-year starters in college. You don't see those much anymore. Yeah, you're, you're not kidding. Nice block right there. Kasum Yakwe comes up with the pin. Gilbert pulls up. That's a three. Got it. All of a sudden, the deficit is 11. And Gray walked. You know, when your defense can give you plays like that, then you have the opportunity to score on the other end. And that's really what UConn needs. You know, string together some stops. Allow your defense to help your offense. So Florida State calling the timeout. 8.46 to go. 11-point seminal advantage. The third annual Never Forget Tribute Classic from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. First part of our doubleheader, Mississippi State picked up the win. They were able to get past Clemson. I thought Ben Howland's team looked pretty good. good. Yeah. And making 19 threes will, will help that cause. Yeah, but but they did. I mean, Lamar Peters has been at another level the last last week or so. Uh, and they, they are. They're physical. They're old. They're, they're balanced. They've got five guys averaging in double figures. And Terrence Clint Mann getting a little bit of a break right here. And part of Clemson, too, is they've got to get Marquise Reed back. Yeah, right? no they doubt. need that, that 19 points a game. They, they need that. He sat it out today with a sprained knee. Adams kicks out. Polly. Rebound by Nichols. Wow. Offensive foul. What would you think about that? I wasn't sure he gave him space there. Yeah, I'd love to see it uh, again because, you know, we just had a cylinder call. On the other end. Yeah, to me, that's 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 a foul on the defense. Yeah. That's a foul on the defense. You, you can't just rush a dude like that, get up in his space. So Nichols, Kumaji, and Kevin Gelly all have four for Florida State. Timeout, UConn, 831 to go. 61 to 50. Yeah, Florida State gotten a big boost to the second half from Terrence Mann. New Jersey, same guy, went from 14 to 41 in the second half after his jersey ripped. But he has delivered. Step back as he knocks down the three and as well on the move. He's done a good job in transition. Just handled the ball, but real steady. He's a coach's son, and, and he thinks the game, and he plays the game like that. He's just really under control. You can't ever really speed him up. He does a little bit of everything for Leonard Hamilton. And, and look at the balance today. Terrence Mann, the 17, and then those other two guys came off of the bench for Florida State and gave him a huge lift, particularly in that first half. Redshirt sophomore Anthony Polite into the game. Adams will try a three. 
he's been ice cold. Save there. Adams feeding inside, loose ball. Seminoles come away with it. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Out of bounds, Florida State basketball. MJ Walker, you're up 11. We're closing in on the under eight timeout. Where yeah. are you going? Without numbers in that spot, yeah. Backs it out. Polite trying to find man. Pass intercepted. Adams now. Polly back to Adams. Polly from the elbow. And they get the foul on Christian Vital. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by United Rentals, who is honored to give back to first responders and all those who serve their community and country. Now look at the 9-11 Memorial. That was completed in 2011. Absolutely gorgeous tribute. This is Bill Pfeiffer. Bill part of Ladder 29 in the South Bronx, a 12-year New York City firefighter. He was disabled in the recovery period September 11th, lifelong UConn fan. His three children received scholarships to attend college from the Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund, and he got a chance to visit with Danny Hurley and the Huskies prior to the game today. And that's the type of special stuff that this event and the Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund are able to do and really cool to see Bill Pfeiffer who again huge UConn fan and a New York City firefighter who was disabled during 9-11 we talked about the Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund close to 155 million dollars been raised for over 3,500 recipients it'll continue through 2030 and what it does is provide educational assistance to the children of those who were either killed or disabled in September 11th. So a great cause that started the week of September 11th to help the families of those affected and the children. Smith kick out. Gilbert gets it to go. And all of a sudden, this is a 10-point game. Got to get stops if you're UConn. It starts with getting stops. Man with the shot clock at six. Man will try a three. Man can't hit. They try and get it under 10. Gilbert. Got it! And it's down to seven. Everybody always says they want to run, but you can't run if you don't get stops. Andy Hurley. I mean, he is moving every play. Polite. Oh, that's a wow. huge one. Big An time. absolutely huge three for the redshirt freshman. He's got five. Back the other end, and Kumaji pulls down the rebound. And the frustration on the face of Danny Hurley. Well, and it's a quick shot. Right. And then now Florida State's going to grind you down for yeah. another... 26 seconds of the shot clock before they take a shot. Man inside, high off the glass, and Kumaji puts it down. 
that's the problem with shooting quick. You can shoot quick, but you better make it. Because what Florida State has done today is they have made UConn work yeah. on the defensive end. Back to a dozen now. Florida State on top. 5.37 to go. And this was that three, Boog, that cut into the margin. They got it off of a defensive stop. It was an early shot, but that one goes down. And then Florida State responds. This was that monster three from Polite to get it back to 10. And then there's the follow-up by Kumaje. And that's the response that Florida State has had all day. You know, every time UConn's tried to chip away, Florida State's had the response. Yeah, there's no question. And again, it, it, it's hard for me in this spot to not default to the experience that they have, that they're continuously counting on guys who have experience, and I think it allows guys like Polite, who don't, to feel secure to make plays when they need to. Yeah. Well, look, one of these teams went to the Elite Eight last year. One of these teams only won 14 games. I think Danny Hurley is the right guy for the University of Connecticut. This team is playing harder. This team has more energy. They have more passion. But at the end of the day, he still has a lot of those players who are on a 14-win team last year. And some of those habits that they had last year, you'll sometimes see creep back in. Got a great game, by the way, coming up tomorrow on ESPN 3 Eastern. Number one, Gonzaga going up against number seven, Tennessee, the Air Force Reserve. Jerry Colangelo Classic at Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix. Top seven matchup comes your way tomorrow. I'll be in Chapel Hill a week from today for Gonzaga and North Carolina. That should be fun. Yeah. My goodness. They are they are so good offensively. And you know a lot of it. We don't talk about Josh Perkins a lot. Their point guard, uh, a, a guy who I think really controls that whole machine that is the Gonzaga offense. And that front court, both of the front courts in that game are so physical, so athletic. Yep. Kumaji gets the block, then the save. Trent Forrest handling, gives off to Man. Close again on five to go in this one. And another call that they're making a lot this year I mean you really have to be set and it's harder on those dribble handoffs where the the ball handlers moving into it it's hard. these are two teams that they just they both get after you they play very very physical play very hard and with that you get the opportunity to get a lot of whistles that foul right there on Kasum Yakwe but I mean I don't and I don't I, I I'm not sure the whistles have not done anything to dissuade and, and and I would say that the calls have been fair but there's also an aspect of you, know, you hear Greg Popovich complaining about too many threes and it's killing the beauty of basketball Take a peep at this. Uh, right. <laughs> a lot of, yeah, no, I'm with you. A lot of stoppages. And, it, you know, the theory is that if you call it, eventually the teams and we'll the players doing it. will adjust. Yeah. And, and so the resolve, particularly at this point in the season, is to make the call and force the teams to adjust. And able to hit Jalen Adams, rebound for Maji looking for some space, goes to the basket, and Mann grabs the air ball. Now Mann looking for some help, and then turns it over. Here comes Terrence Smith, goes behind the back, up and under, gets hammered, and he'll go to the line. That's one of those, if you're Terrence Mann, you're, you're almost better off just throwing it out of bounds. Yeah. 
Because trying to kick it out there back to the top, you start the fast break of UConn, and now they get two free throws. Player down here. Looks like it's MJ Walker. Body's getting tangled. He was hanging up in the air. Does not look too bad. And I'm assuming ankle, but I don't know it. It's hard. When, you, when you're that high in the air and yeah. you land, it could be, who knows? Sure. Ten team fouls on each side. So double bonus both ways the rest of the way. 68-56, Florida State with the lead. John Chambi, Chris Spatola here from the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. And Terrence Smith started at Nebraska. Then on to Duquesne and now at UConn. Mention played his high school ball commuting from Ocean Township, which is about 35 miles away. He commuted to play for Bob Hurley Sr. You saw MJ Walker making his way to the locker room. And there is Bob Hurley looking on. Nichols being harassed. They get it over the midcourt stripe. And an offensive foul. They get that one on Trent Forrest. Thanks very much. Back here in Newark and Terrence Mann's Florida State team on top in this one, 68-58. Just had the following conversation off the air with Chris Patola. I said, you know, Army beat Navy again this year, third straight year. And then he said, you didn't really react to the fact that it was 14 straight years we lost. And I said, uh-huh. You don't seem like you have a lot of sensitivity to that, is what he said to me. You don't. You, you've you've been very callous in your yeah. discussion of the score today and the rivalry. Not the rivalry, but the fact that Army won. And I don't think you realize we lost 14 straight years. Right. In the risk of sounding like someone who's not particularly empathetic, I was not aware that my responsibility today was to ease your pain. All well, circle back. All yes, back. Nobody better than you at that. <laughs> Back out of bounds. And it'll be Florida State basketball. 3.36 to go, and appropriately enough, Terrence Mann will take it out of bounds. Nichols just able to scoop it up. And then finds Mann, polite. And they're going to go possession arrow. It stays with Florida State. I'm interested to see what Kofor's addition means. But look, this is a, a UConn team that is pretty good. But I like this Florida State team. I think this is a oh, team yeah. that could be a pain in the butt for, uh, I mean, you go to their place, I, I see a lot of teams losing. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's nice to be old, which they are. Yeah. And, you know, he plays a lot of guys, Leonard Hamilton. And, and talking to him this morning, 
One of the things that they're figuring out is who their seventh, eighth, nine yeah. guy is. As he said, that, that's where I'm a little insecure. But like your, to your point, they get this guy back. You pair him with that starting lineup. How about the job that Cabin Gelly did today? How many yeah. big guys in the ACC look and play like that? This is a good team. Cabin Gelly, by the way, just picked up his fifth. And so Kumaji fouls out. Kofor in the sweatsuit today on the bench. He's uh, He's been a high fashion guy on the bench. And I was asking Chuck Walsh earlier today, the SID for Florida State, will he be in the ripped jeans? And Chuck said, no, no, I've asked him to, to not wear the ripped jeans. I said, you pay a lot of money for those ripped jeans. Yeah. It's a fashion statement. Good hands by polite knocking that out of bounds. You know, back to your point in terms of the experience, I think in a lot of stretches, and, and this is anecdotal and, and, and it absolutely could be incorrect, but you know, the stretches where a lot of the, the non-Power 5 conference teams were winning in the NCAA tournament, I think the advantage they had at times over high major teams was that their teams were always experienced. But now we're getting high major teams that have some of both. They have some experience and that elite level talent. That makes them really hard to beat. Absolutely. Look at the last three national champs we've had. I mean, that's been the model. Inside, Kumaji. Offensive rebound, and he's fouled with 2.29 to go. Well, back down the other end. We get ourselves a seven-point game. And how about the job Al Gilbert has done? You know, a guy who, who has much been much more of a distributor on the year for them. 11 assists in their game the other day against Lafayette. Lafayette. They shot the ball well in the second half. Six for Kumaji. Some both. Raekwon Gray checks back in. Kamaji will grab a seat. So you got two seniors, two freshmen, and the junior on the court for Florida State right now. So they Hang on to a nine-point advantage. Gilbert leaving inside. Feeds Yakwe, able to get the foul on Florida State. This used two losses, Iowa and Arizona. And right now, this would be the third. And they have struggled from the line, 14-22. You know, it's very telling in this game, Boog, that on the day, UConn only has six assists. Yeah. And Florida State only has five. Ooh. And what that tells you is everything's been individually done. Like, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of creating for other guys. And, and that's, that's the design of both defenses. Like, they want individual guys to beat them. And they want to limit what you do. But this has been an ugly physical affair and a low assist affair. Indeed, 11 total assists in the game. Nichols gets inside, shot block, deflected out of bounds. It'll stay Florida State, 149 to go. And the Knolls by seven. Four on the shot clock. And that's where I think UConn bogs down. You mentioned the two losses to Iowa and Arizona. 34 turnovers in both those games yeah. combined, only 22 assists. So high turnover, low assists, a lot of dribbling. They get it to man inside, and he slices through for the layup. That was too easy. 
19 for Terrence Mann. And Adams draws the foul. And every team has a low shot clock under out of bounds play. And a nice little cross at the top. Terrence Mann by himself, and you just kind of put it in the air and allow the athlete to go make a play. And he's so under control. I mean, that's the tempo that Terrence Mann plays at. You can't get him sped up, so he gathers it in the air, gathers himself, and then finishes. Fifteen of his nineteen in the second half for the senior from Lowell, Massachusetts. Adams back to the line. Jalen Adams, who Massachusetts native himself, Roxbury, Massachusetts. A number of really good players from out of there recently. The guy you mentioned earlier today, Wayne Selden. Rocks for <laughs> 93 seconds left in this one. It's FSU by eight. Adams with 15 points. Seven-point game. Dangerous as they inbound underneath the basket. Flip it up ahead. Polite. They go the lob, and man couldn't collect it. And now you've got a chance to cut into the deficit. Gilbert flips Ooh. it up and in. And he wanted the foul. What a tough shot. All of a sudden, it's a five-point game. Gilbert's got 24. Well, Florida State decides to throw the lob. High risk play, especially when you're up, and then go in the other direction. The Euro step into the floater. What a shot that is. Mentioned out to Gilbert from the Atlanta area. He was a huge recruit. He's a redshirt sophomore. Dealt with shoulder trouble each of the last two seasons. McDonald's All-American. And he's coming off a game where he scored two. Count of two points. Did have 11 assists against Lafayette. So here's Trent Forrest. Kemba Walker on the left, Jeremy Lamb on the right. Charlotte in town to take on the Knicks tomorrow night. Home game for Kembo's from New York City. Big free Big throws free. for a guy who knocks him down at an 89% clip. Seven-point game, one minute left. Gilbert fires. Ooh. And look at that flying in for the dunk is Terrence Smith. Man gets to Nichols. Now the flip up to Forrest. And they foul Forrest. Terrence Smith flying in. We've seen a lot of these plays, these... Putbacks, O boards at the rim today. And here's Trent Forrest going back to the line. And this is, like you said, Boog, this is the guy you want if you're Florida State at the foul line. What do you call that? I mean, I, he just missed. You had nothing to do with it. 
Hit a big game winner to beat Purdue at the end of that game. And uh, took a Spatola jinx to miss the front end on that. Forrest with seven here in this one. And gets the second. So it's a six point game timeout. 47.7 seconds left. The third annual Never Forget Tribute Classic. Presented by United Rentals here in New Jersey. John Shelby, Chris Spatola, thanks for joining us. As Mississippi State won the opener over Clemson. There's the 9-11 Memorial over in New York City, about I don't know, 35 minutes away in that range. That was completed in 2011. This has been uh, it's been an unbelievable event. The, the turnout today was is incredible from from really all four schools. UConn and Florida State in particular. This no game doubt, this good afternoon. energy. Absolutely, yeah, it's been it's been terrific. Second half for UConn. Only Adams, Gilbert, and Smith have scored. Adams gets blocked, and that's a huge play. And then Mann gets fouled, and then Danny Hurley. Picks up a technical. So Danny Hurley gets teed. He thought that Jalen Adams got fouled going to the basket. Yeah, and Jalen Adams has had these opportunities all night. You know, I don't, I don't see a foul there from that angle. I, I don't see a foul there. I agree. Uh, you know, so it's he's got to finish that layup, and he's had opportunities here tonight, several, to finish at the basket, hasn't done it. And this, you know, you get a technical foul, it's going to put your team certainly out of reach. And Nichols gets the free throws, 15. That's the most he scored in a seminal uniform. Mentioned the Albany transfer did have 40 in a game against Hartford. So man at the line. He wears 14, tore his jersey. Now he's wearing 41. Do you have any other Field of Dreams lines you'd like to get in right now? I've exhausted yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah. But, uh, but we've gotten them all out. It's one of James Earl Jones' finest roles. Yeah, I would agree. Feet underneath, and Adams gets the bucket, and it's a seven-point game. Pressure coming. Man looking for some help. They get polite, and polite goes opposite. Now the throw up ahead and now they found Nichols. Well they beat the numbers and then Nichols will go to the line. Good free throw shooter. 24.7 left. So Phil Colfer the hope is that game on December 17th that he'll be ready to go. I think get him some more practice time and then get him back for either Southeast Missouri or North Florida. And then that's a good St. Louis team that they'll face on the 22nd. One more against Winthrop and then it starts at Virginia, Miami and Duke to begin. And there's a turnover, and that is going to do it.
Florida State will win this one. 79-71, the final score. Here in Newark, the Knowles win it by eight for Chris Patola and our entire outstanding crew. I'm John Chompy saying so long. FSU 79, UConn 71. Up next, New Mexico State against second-ranked Kansas. We send you to Mark Neely and John Sunbold.